Ciao friends! It has been a while since I made a video, and in that time, a lot has happened. Firstly, we had a race that never really happened. We had the first race in the Netherlands in a very long time, and silly season. Uh, just all of it. All of silly season. <laughs> Quite frankly, it's probably not all of silly season. But let's cover the things that we know so far. Callum Isla, obviously an Alfa Romeo reserve driver, is going to be doing three rounds of IndyCar for the end of the season this year. That makes it seem likely that Alfa Romeo don't have a seat for him for 2022 and that he's looking for other options. Obviously, we know he is going down the endurance route with Ferrari, probably to lead their hypercar program, but if IndyCar comes along, I doubt he'll turn that down. Staying with Alfa Romeo, Kimi Raikkonen has decided to call it quits. He's retiring at the end of the season. Obviously, the 2007 world champion with Ferrari, and uh, as of right now, Ferrari's most recent world champion, which is, of course, quite sad. He's uh, old now, quite frankly. Um, we all expected him to retire a while ago. Uh, it's... <laughs> It's surprising he's managed to stick around as long as he has. And in a fantastic bout of uncreativity, Alfa Romeo have decided to replace him with another Finn who has just left a top team, Valtteri Bottas. But before we talk about him, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this one. It really does help out the channel and it lets you know when I post new videos on Formula One and the world of motorsport. Valtteri Bottas, after five years at Mercedes AMG Petronas, He's been let go. Well, I say let go, his contract has not been renewed and he has moved to Alfa Romeo. He has never had a more than one year contract at Mercedes. And he said one of the things he was looking for in any other deal in Formula One was that he wanted at least a multi-year contract and he has got that with Alfa Romeo. But it's tough to argue that it isn't a step down. He was racing at the team that won four back-to-back -back world championships with him. But none of those ended up being driver's titles for him. They all went to Lewis Hamilton, as I'm sure you all know. That's not to say that Valtteri Bottas hasn't been doing a good job at Mercedes. He definitely has. If what Mercedes needed was someone that could just confirm them the WCC every year, they found that in Bottas. But looking to the future, this is less about replacing Bottas and it's more about replacing Hamilton when he decides to retire because it's going to happen eventually. George Russell has been announced to go to Mercedes, which is of course the worst kept secret in Formula One. We've known this for at least a year, at least a year. Mercedes even said that they would have had him this year if Williams hadn't have taken the contract option that they had. But he's not going to Mercedes to replace Bottas. That's not his job. He's going to Mercedes so he can get to know the team, embed there, get up to speed, so that when Lewis Hamilton decides to call it quits, Mercedes aren't out in the dry without a fast driver. Look at Ferrari with Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel. It's not that Leclerc was replacing Kimi, who ended up being the driver that left, to go to Alfa Romeo. I'm noticing a trend. It's that Leclerc needed to be there so that he could get up to speed and replace Vettel when Vettel moved on. But that ended up happening far quicker than expected and Vettel lost speed far quicker than expected, so Vettel moved on earlier than, you know, I would expect Hamilton to. Although we don't, of course, know how he'll get on with this new generation of cars. Or, in fact, that Mercedes will even build a fast one. It's very possible, and it would be very George Russell, that Williams end up being faster than Mercedes next year. That'd be a shock, wouldn't it? This, of course, meant that both seats at Williams were up in the air, with George Russell leaving, and Williams recently saying that they no longer needed pay drivers due to them, well, being an investment company, and that had doubts thrown on Nicholas Latifi continuing with the team. I always thought that uh, after especially the recent results, but quite frankly his entire career, he was an obvious choice to keep. You know, he was no George Russell, but the fact that he was anywhere close is pretty damn impressive considering George Russell has now gone to Mercedes. But uh, moments before I started recording this, I'm really glad I didn't do this like two hours ago, Williams have announced that both Nicholas Latifi is staying on and that they have hired Alexander Albon for the other seat. Albon, who had been looking at IndyCar, but had always maintained that F1 was the goal, that IndyCar was a backup. He's maintaining a relationship with Red Bull, which apparently Mercedes weren't particularly happy about. They, being Williams' engine supplier, they had some comments about Williams hiring a Red Bull driver. 
But they managed to get that all squared away, and Alex Halbon is driving a Williams next year, which is great news. I mean, he's the 2019 Rookie of the Year, don't forget. He beat George Russell and Lando Norris to that. And Antonio Giovinazzi, but, you know, technically he wasn't a rookie, so... <laughs> Basically, a lot of this means if you're British and like drivers because they're British, um, for some reason, I don't understand it personally, but, you know, you do you, this has all been great news. <laughs> A British driver who runs under a Thai flag, admittedly, is returning to the grid for a British team. And George Russell is going to Mercedes to partner Lewis Hamilton, a fellow countryman. My favourite driver is Monegasque, so, you know, doesn't really concern me all that much. Alpha Tauri also announced that they would be keeping both Pierre Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda in a move that I think makes quite a lot of sense. Gasly has been doing very, very well in this team. It doesn't make sense to drop him, especially as Alpha Tauri moves to more of a sister team dynamic. I think he stays on. Yuki, he's not been doing particularly well, but at the end of the day, he is still a rookie, and the point of your rookie season is to find the limits. You know, it, it, it's... <laughs> It's there so that drivers have time to develop and build up. And the fact that they haven't sacked him, I think, means that Red Bull are starting to learn their lesson. They didn't sack Perez either. He's staying on too. I think they've learned their lesson from the Gasly and Albon days, even maybe Ricardo to a lesser extent. I think they're giving drivers the time of day. They're, they're letting them have a chance to actually improve in the sport you know, bed down in their teams and start getting better at the job that they're hired to do, rather than sacking them every 18 months just to replace them with someone who has the exact same difficulties, because what both drivers needed at the end of the day was time. And now we know that both Gasly and Albon are getting that time, just not at Red Bull Racing. I've been starting to get into TikTok recently. I have a new F1 TikTok. It's the same name as the channel. I'll try and link it in the description or the pinned comment. There might be something on there that you enjoy if uh, that's your thing. If you like this video, please consider dropping a like down below. Uh, it really does help out and boost this video in the algorithm. Tell me what you think about Silly Season this year in the comments or over on the Two Sex Dead Discord server. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you next time. There's been another major change since uh, since I last recorded, and it's that. It's, uh, I've changed my hair colour. You should all consider yourselves very lucky that I didn't change this into a NASCAR channel. Uh, I've been obsessed recently.